in Vancouver, uh, Taiwanese cultures really need some kind of ways to promote their own cultures. And uh, I think TRIF is one of the way to do so. The way that TRIF is doing it is in a very uh, attractive way because through the movies, people get to see and get to learn the cultures in a very effective way. And yeah, so I think TRIF is doing a pretty good job. Well, we're trying to target the mainstream, just like everybody. It's about sharing the, the Taiwanese films with the rest of the world, not just with the Taiwanese people. TWIF TRIF has been increasing marketing to show off films that portray the organizers' idea of Taiwanese culture. The, the Taiwanese festival has over a thousand people attending. There's quite a few promotional methods that we have. So we have press conferences, we try to get interviews in through the Georgia Street, the Vancouver Sun, things like that. Um, we also have a mascot series where a big eye walks around Robson and Granville Island to give a bit more exposure in the Taiwanese Film Festival. As the festival organizers witnessed the incredible impact the event had on the community around them, they began to realize that the experience of putting TWIF together was valuable in constructing their own sense of identity as Taiwanese Canadians. I cannot really, um, really involve myself with the, the very trendy Taiwanese community because I'm just not updated. <laughs> but uh, watching the films made me more updated, but I'm still quite a far bit behind. Uh, I know some young people, they came here very early, but they are very uh, Caucasian educated and they know nothing about Asian cultures, pretty much say whitewashed. Of course their historian backgrounds should be Taiwanese, but in terms of what they know, who they are, I think they are still not qualified as Taiwanese Canadians. In order to be called Taiwanese, you need to know something about Taiwan and you need to have passion over it. As Dr. Ray suggests, the Taiwanese Film Festival attracts a potential audience of parachute children. These arrangements are costly as parents must provide financially for children living alone overseas. These children are remote parented, experiencing early independence while pursuing a Western education to better their career prospects. Professor Chris Ray explains parachuting like this. They helicopter in, they, they, drop their, they drop their kids someplace, and they do kind of remote parenting. And um, that this is a different type of identity than what we think of as you know, exclusively Taiwanese or exclusively uh, Chinese or Singaporean versus Canadian. Parachuting creates a gap between the older and younger generation. Without authority figures at home to perpetuate Taiwanese culture, the younger generation adapts to Western ways, losing the natural bond to ethnic identity and the culture of the native country. The Taiwanese Film Festival gives immigrants the opportunity to become more conscious of Taiwanese identity. Planning the Taiwanese Film Festival, it's actually helped me grow closer to Taiwan. Um, I grew up in South America for the past 15 years, um, and then I came to Canada about seven or eight years ago. In South America, I didn't have as much exposure to Taiwan, um, and so I think I've, I've grown to, to love Taiwan a bit more. How are you supposed to do the calculus for who is more or less, uh, more or less Taiwanese or more or less Canadian? based on where they live. It's a very complex question. It's not in the Taiwan people. So it becomes a a 可能你要學的怎麼融入才是重點這樣子。Again, identity is not a zero sum game. So sometimes these these identity questions kind of either go in circles or lead us lead us to a dead end. 
As Professor Henry Yu points out, the festival provides Taiwanese Canadians an opportunity to self-reflect. People rarely reflect on their own culture within their own country, but the contrast of living abroad forces you to define your heritage. One of the events I, I plan is that we have this promotional event in Crystal Mall. We have this, um, some choirs come over to sing some songs from Taiwan and then some magic shows we're giving out. Uh, we ask trivia questions and then we hand out uh, tickets. And then when I look at the movies, it reminds me of where I was born. And then it's kind of like keep the bonds between me and my home country since I don't go back, like not really go back, like really, I go to Taiwan very often. Yeah, so whatever I see the scene that's like that shows where I grew up, this kind of touchy, and then that yeah, feels pretty good. And TWIP has brought me a brand new way to get in touch with Taiwan. Um, I go back to Taiwan every summer, but when I'm within the TWIP team, I start doing research, I start reading more stories about this film, about the Taiwanese cultures, and through this I learned a lot. I feel like I'm in Taiwan with TWIP, the more I was in Taiwan. TWIF has brought me a great opportunity to sit down and really read something and understand and educate myself and uh, also enhance Taiwanese culture if I could. For me, when I sell a ticket, I think I would like to know more about Taiwan and how to make them more interested in Taiwan. Multiple film audiences can get very different messages and I think not all filmmakers are doing it in order to express some kind of cultural message or some form of cultural identity. And you might not be able to imagine a Vietnamese filmmaker or a Hollywood filmmaker making this film because they're not Taiwanese. But it doesn't mean that the film is about being Taiwanese. I think film does many things. Film can capture all kinds of ideas, meanings. It can convey it both, both verbally in terms of the dialogue and speech, and also non-verbally, just the visuals. A lot of the message is not articulated in someone speaking. That if you were to not read the subtitles, you'd still get a lot of meaning. And so what you're transported to is a sense of, of a scene. And what's being said in the dialogue, the meaning of the words, it's not superfluous, but it's not the main message. It's not a radio play, this is film. And so, to me, do we call that a cultural expression? Do we call it a particular uh, kind of filmic, visual, and audio uh, interpretation of history? Or you could say he's just trying to say something, or she's trying to say something in a film. And some people will take it as an expression of identity.